Visit SailRight.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Eric Grant. In today's tutorial video, we're going to show you how to replace a cushion on a chair like this. This cushion has piping around the perimeter, and it's rather loose, mainly because they uh, didn't reinforce it very well with uh, staples around the edge. We're going to take this off, uh, inspect the foam, see if we can reuse it, and show you how to make one for yourself. In this first chapter, we're going to be removing the old fabric. Okay, so we're going to take the uh, seat off, and usually there are a couple screws. Um, they, the chairs can vary. Looks like there's a screw here, here, and here for it, and they're just using a Phillips head screw. There we go. We can set the frame aside. And we'll flip it over and we'll remove the staples holding the cambric dust cover on the back side. This is a staple lifter tool available at Sarite. I just, uh, this is my favorite uh, tool for lifting staples, mainly because it just has really sharp uh, prongs and it's very strong. And in some applications, you can actually remove the staple completely, like that one, if you just give it a twist with your finger. So once it's in there, just twist it. Sometimes they don't, they aren't able to be removed all the way. And then in those situations, you'll just use needle nose pliers or a, uh, this is actually a wire cutter. Um, as long as you don't uh, go down hard, it removes the staples as well. Cause you're not trying to cut them. You're just trying to pull them out, but it grips it nicely because it's a cutter. Okay. Once that's off, then we got to remove the staples that hold the fabric and also the piping or cording. We have all the staples out and this is the piping. I'm going to set it aside. Let's take a look at the foam. It's not bad. I think we'll be able to reuse it. Yeah, I'm just going to reuse it. It doesn't seem like it's totally compressed. Now foam, if I cut a square of foam, this rounded appearance would eventually uh, happen over time just because the fabric's wrapping around. It's often not molded like this. So don't be alarmed if you use a one inch extra firm, um, high density foam that's obviously square, it'll eventually round naturally because of the fact that the fabric is constantly pulling on it. In fact, you can tell back here uh, because people don't sit here and it wasn't wrapped around in the backside as much. This used to be totally uh, squarish in shape, not rounded. If your foam is compressed and you're definitely feeling the board, I recommend that you get a high density uh, foam in either a firm, because it's going to be one inch, or extra firm, if you want to make sure that you should never feel that board. If you buy a low density foam or a medium density foam and you sit on the chair all the time, it's definitely going to bottom out in a short time. High density foam means it lasts longer. Next up, stapling the new cover to the seat. This is a Krypton fabric available at Sayrite, and this is the right side of the fabric. It's laying against the tabletop. I can use this fabric, the old one, as a pattern uh, to cut the new one. Obviously, we're going to wrap it around a backer board, so it doesn't have to be exactly that size, but uh, we know generally the size that we need to cut it based on this. There's no reason to use a hot knife because uh, the fabric is just wrapped around the backer board. So I'm just going to use a pair of scissors and cut it to this size. So if your fabric had a specific pattern, this one's a kind of random pattern. I do think that this is kind of like a, in a way, a stripe. It runs this way. You could run it either way, but I think it looks best like this. So this will be the front of the chair and this will be the sides of the chair based on the pattern. So we're going to put the, uh, fat, the uh, backer board with the foam over the top of it. I like to take the old fabric off. Well, this one had piping, you have no choice. But uh, even if you don't have piping, it's a good idea to take the old fabric off uh, because sometimes the fabric holds uh, dirt and mold and mildew can grow a little bit fast to dirt. We're gonna just start with the front and I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm gonna uh, pull the fabric over. We don't have to worry about tensioning yet uh, because of the fact that we have to work from the backside. Then I'm gonna go to the backside and here I'm going to make sure that the fabric is pulled fairly taut. I like to run my hand over the back 
Now I don't want to have hard spots either, so you want to be careful about creating too much tension. So I'm going to pull basically kind of like across at two spots here and then like that and put a staple in the middle. We can always remove it if we don't like it. And then I'm going to come over here to the side and pull fairly taut and then this side. So I like to tack it kind of like in the middle of where I'm working. It's a little bit of pressure. Okay, and then let's go ahead and start with uh, the uh, back side here. And three, and then we'll work to the front side here and make sure that it's nice and tight. It is. Okay, so I'm going to do th about three staples. I like to hold my hand kind of like this, so it kind of gives even pressure rather than just doing this when I'm tensioning the fabric. So see how my thumb's kind of grabbing a chunk of fabric. There's a little bit of a hard spot there compared to here. So what I'll do is I'll just pull a little bit more here. And then we come back to the back and finish it up here. I'm not going all, all the way to the corners. I'm going to, oops, didn't push down all the way. <clears throat> okay. Okay, this is the front. Does it look good? Does it have any extra tension anywhere? I don't think so. It actually looks pretty good. So we're going to do the same process to the sides. We're going to stop at the corners right about here on all the corners, and we'll show you what to do with that next. I'm using the Sayerite upholstery staple gun. This is a great staple gun at a reasonable price. Um, it puts in a, a larger head staple of a half inch. And that means that if you're doing a vinyl fabric, because the staple head is so long compared to a 3 8 inch, it doesn't easily puncture the vinyl fabric putting a hole in it. So it has almost the perfect amount of tension. I highly recommend the Sayerite upholstery staple gun available in a long nose, as you can see here, and also a short nose. So you could, for the corners, you could just pull this back and uh, try to work out these wrinkles, but I like to reduce the bulk. And to do that, what I do is I find the edge of the board, which is right here, and uh, I will cut this excess away about a half inch from that edge. So notice I'm a half inch from the edge of the board approximately. And I'll stop cutting about a half inch before I reach this edge of the board. So right about there, and then I, do the same thing over here. So here's the edge of the board, half inch, cut into this about a half inch away, like that. And then here, for this, this, I just do a 45 degree cut to get rid of this bulk, and 45 degree cut to get rid of that, so that kind of lays flat on itself. And then I trim off leaving a tail about two inches or so, like that. And you can also get rid of this too, because that's not gonna do anything. Okay, so now we have a smaller corner. Now we, the process is still the same. I'm still gonna pull the fabric, but I just don't have as much bulk. I'm gonna put a staple a little bit closer here, and a little bit closer here. It basically uh, keeps that corner kind of flat. Okay, and then I'm going to pull this until I get something that looks pleasing. So I don't want this to be uh, noticeable. You can put a, a few multiple wrinkles in there to try to reduce that. So we'll see how that reduced that. And I'm going to pull fairly tight, put a staple here. And then I'm going to work over here. I got a couple wrinkles in here, which means this, this, this is reduced in wrinkles. And put a staple here. And now notice that this goes up like this. That's because the board actually takes a little jaunt here. So it's a corner and then there's a little board sticking out here. So that's a beautiful corner. 
Trim away this excess, there's no reason to have it. So trim it to the staples that you made all around the perimeter. Okay, there's our finished results. Got gorgeous corners, as you can see, beautiful. And ready for the piping. Coming up, we'll be making the piping for our chair. This is the wrong side of the fabric, right side is facing the table. And as you can see, this is the old piping that was on it and I'm gonna need uh, a longer strip. I'm gonna do straight cut piping. There's no real reason to do a bias piping for this kind of application. So I'm gonna have to sew a couple pieces together. So I'm placing the clear acrylic ruler on my uh, chalk mark. Upholstery fabric has a mind of its own. So if, if my mark is off, I can just bump the fabric and you notice the white line comes out. Um, so just know that if, if you've got a straight edge and it's not lining up parallel, you can actually just tweak it with your fingers. So we need two strips for this one chair. We have multiple chairs, we're gonna need several more strips. So I'm gonna use uh, the, the rotary cutter here and show you how it cuts with that. And then we, you can also cut it with scissors, but uh, this cuts pretty easily. You do have to hold the fabric right where you're cutting because it's an upholstery fabric and it wants to move. Okay, the outside surface is now facing up. We're gonna put them on top of each other and we're gonna cut the ends at a 45 degree. Make sure that they are facing the same way, whether it be outside surfaces up or wrong side surfaces up. We're gonna put it on the 45 degree of the clear acrylic ruler. Right there is a 45 degree. And we're gonna cut it with a rotary cutter. Now we're gonna take these and go uh, Outside surfaces face each other and go in the complete opposite direction. So they line up with little ears sticking out like that. Okay, okay we have the machine in three millimeters. We want a short stitch length for joining uh, piping together. I'm, I'm gonna have to remove this pin because it's in the way, but I'm gonna hold my assembly. So I'm gonna sew through that, lower my foot to this. I'm a little bit off there, there we go. Okay, and hopefully it is fairly close together, and it is, as you can see. So we're using a foam cording. This is the wrong side of the fabric, and we're just going to fold it in there. We have a piping tunnel built into this machine. We're just going to sew uh, right against the uh, cording. And, and I did put the machine back in a six millimeter uh, stitch length when we're doing this. So here's our uh, splice and I'm going to splay it so that it basically reduces the bulk as we sew over it. This is the back so we're going to have the junction obviously in the back. I'll leave this one whole and we'll uh, actually you know what I'm going to open this one up a little bit and we're going to cut it out uh, a little bit of the piping out of this so that we can join or just insert it inside of there. There we go. In this chapter, we'll be stapling the dust cover and piping to our seat bottom. And I am gonna put the staple closer to the piping than what they had. Um, that will uh, keep this piping uh, more firm along the uh, perimeter. And these corners should be fairly easy because they're a gentle curve. If they were uh, uh, more of a 90 degree sharp turn, you would just cut some relief slits into the flange like that and it would take the turn easily, but I don't think I need to do that. So we're just gonna go around the perimeter doing this. 
and we'll show you what we do when we get to having to join it together. It's better if you hold the stapler in towards the bulk of the wood because since we're doing it so close to the edge, that way the staple kind of goes in at a 30 degree to 45 degree and hits the wood. So if you do it like this, you could miss the wood. This corner is fairly sharp, so I am going to cut some relief notches. We talked about that already, which will allow it to take the turn. There we go, like that. We're coming to the junction and I cut out right to there. I can feel the piping. So what I want to do is I want to cut this at that same spot and then we can open this up and lay it in there. And if it's too much, which it is, I think it's running into that. Let's find out. Yeah, I need to cut off a little bit more until it lays in there nice and neat. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and put a staple there to hold this all together and finish it off. There we go. Now you could put the, the old cambric dust cover on if it's still in good shape or Sayerite sells it too, which we'll put a part number on the screen so you can get that if it's in bad shape. We're going to just lay it over and We'll start here at the back and staple there and then come to the front. And if, if there's too much, there's a little bit too much because I got my piping in slightly different spots, I'll just kind of fold, fold the edge back. That way it doesn't show up. And we'll do this around the entire perimeter, first securing the four sides. Now we're going to take it after the cambric dust covers on the bottom and we're going to reinstall it to the chair and we'll show you what it's like when it's done. And here's a look at our chair now that it is complete. It takes approximately 1.3 yards to do four chairs of this size. You'll have plenty of extra for your piping. Next up, a list of the tools and materials we use to complete this project. From all of us here at Sailrite, I'm Seth Grant. Thanks for watching.